Greetings. Welcome to Liberty Bugle Town Hall. I saw a thought-provoking meme I wanted to share with you. We'll look at it in a minute. But first, I have a couple questions for you to help put things in perspective. Do you have a cell phone that looks anything at all like this? <clears throat> How do you like it? You know, it's called a cell phone, mobile phone, but do you do more with it than simply make telephone calls? <clears throat> well, do you remember these? How about this guy right here? Would you prefer to have this as your current device? What would have been the case if scientific minds hadn't innovated and stretched the parameters of this first cell phone to make it do more than just make a phone call? You know, to make it send and receive messages, to search the internet, to have access to almost all the knowledge of human history literally right at your fingertips. You know, this little cell phone has more computing power, literally, than the first computers that came along, oh, 50, 70 years ago. They look kind of like this. Let's look at another quick, quick example. Would you rather fly on one of these? Go something like this? There's no sound. This is the Wright Brothers' first flight. You know, <clears throat> it flew. True. It wasn't too comfortable. It wasn't very safe. Or would you rather fly on one of these? Beautiful. Boeing 777. It's like moving from place to place in the comfort of your living room. But let's back up a minute. Regarding your cell phone, do you know who this is? Guglielmo Marconi. Without him, you might not have that cell phone you use. Marconi was a scientist and an inventor. He built the equipment that transmitted electrical signals wirelessly through the air, and his experiments are cited as the dawn of wireless telegraphy and radio. Marconi was a scientist obsessively dedicated to proving the efficacy of his theories, but his friends thought he was nuts, literally crazy with his obsession. In their minds, messages in the day were communicated via wired technology, and they didn't believe there was any other way. There's even a story that at one point, several of Marconi's friends put him in a straitjacket and took him to a sanitarium to be committed because they thought his ideas about wireless communications were madness. Like those who challenged the conventional wisdom of the times, Marconi was way outside the norms of the day. But being a good scientist and innovator, he didn't cave in. He pushed on past the status quo in pursuit of better science. The Wright brothers were the same way. Since the beginning of time, Man has dreamed of being able to fly like birds, but failed attempts outnumbered successes to the point that conventional wisdom had accepted flight as beyond reach. We continue to refine flight today. Who knows what will unfold in the future, if we allow it, if we embrace the risks of discovery and don't cave in to the deniers that say it can't be so. So what's been all the noise and claims around follow the science during the last few years? What is science anyway? Let's take a look at dictionary.com for their definition of science. You can see they have seven entries here for science, but I'd like to highlight a couple. Number two here, systematic knowledge of the physical and material world gained through observation and experimentation. And then the fifth entry they have, knowledge as of facts or principles, whoops, let's go back to that one, as of facts or principles, knowledge gained by systematic study. Systematic study and knowledge gained through observation and experimentation, sorry about that, 
and knowledge gained through observation and experimentation uh, kind of imply that there's another definition to science that might be added or, or another sub-definition to uh, science that might be added, and that is science is an ongoing process of discovery. Without that ongoing process of discovery, you might still be using one of these or this beast right here. How can anyone deny that ongoing process of discovery to occur? How dare anyone say the process of improvement is finished? It's doubtful a true scientist actually accepts that. Well, maybe someone would only accept that if their motive had shifted from pursuing the science to profiteering. Denying the ongoing process of discovery part of science is happening all around us today. And this brings us to the meme that I mentioned earlier that I wanted to share. You'll recognize some of the characters on this, on this screen. They vehemently encouraged us to follow the science and get a COVID-19 vaccine. Now, I'm not here to argue for or against the COVID vaccine. It may be quite appropriate for some people based on their health condition and quite unnecessary for others based on their age and health condition. I want us to consider that science is not done with the matter and that the ongoing process of scientific discovery should freely be allowed to unfold, which hasn't been the case. Let's look at some of their claims that they use to justify their recommendations to follow the science. You can see Dr. Fauci. I know that you recall these things well. When people are vaccinated, they are not going to get affected. And President Biden, many times, you're not going to get COVID if you have these vaccinations. Rochelle Walensky, the CDC director, said vaccinated people do not carry the virus and don't get sick. She was vaccinated and she got sick. Rachel Maddow was really emphatic. Now we know the vaccines work well enough that the virus stops. And Bill Gates, everyone who takes the vaccine is reducing their transmission. Let's take a look at these so that you'll hear it from their own lips. You're not going to get COVID if you have these vaccinations. The vaccine can stop the spread of these diseases. No excuse for anyone being unvaccinated. This continues to be a pandemic of the unvaccinated. This is really becoming a pandemic of the unvaccinated. And that means getting vaccinated, you can save yourself. These vaccines are highly, highly effective. And when people are vaccinated, they can feel safe that they are not going to get infected. Fully vaccinated people are at a very, very low risk of getting COVID-19. Our data from the CDC today suggests, um, you know, that, that vaccinated people do not carry the virus, don't get sick, um, and, and that it's not just in the clinical trials, but it's also in real world data. What's your take on the next steps for COVID? What should the country be doing right now? Getting vaccinated. And for those who aren't? We've got a problem. We have the capacity to control it. They should get vaccinated. Let me emphasize that if you are vaccinated, you have a very high degree of protection, and therefore you do not need to wear a mask. This is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. The unvaccinated overcrowd our hospitals. Well, guess what? So how about patriotism? How about making sure that you're vaccinated so you do not spread the disease to anybody else? Person, should we have any worries about walking by someone on the street who may be unvaccinated? Not at all. I would have no concern walking down the street past a person who's not been vaccinated and even a person who's been infected because the protection is really quite substantial. Well, whether you're working in a supermarket to make sure you have been vaccinated so you're not spreading anything to anyone else or you're not likely to get the virus. The primary end upon which the 95% efficacy was determined was based on the prevention of clinically recognizable disease. Now we know that the vaccines work well enough that the virus stops with every vaccinated person. A vaccinated person gets exposed to the virus. The virus does not infect them. The virus cannot then use that person to go anywhere else. Will the president update his language at some time to be more reflective of the fact that people who are triple vaccinated are catching and spreading COVID.
Our thanks to the Daily Caller for that montage. These are the sources from which those clips were extracted. Uh, Peter Ducey was a little bit hard to hear there at the end, but he was saying that uh, President Biden might rephrase his his admonishments because, you know, we've got people that have been vaccinated three times and they're still uh, getting sick with the virus. I want to slip back to the slide, though, and take a look at Bill Gates. Bill Gates's assertion here that everyone who takes the vaccine is reducing their transmission or the possibility that they will transmit the virus. Here's a video here that reveals a, a Pfizer executive, Janine Smalls, who admits that Pfizer never even tested for the possibility of whether the, the vaccine would reduce transmission. Check it out. Here she's asked Please. the question. So there are no misunderstandings. Was the Pfizer COVID vaccine tested on stopping the transmission of the virus before it entered the market? If not, please say it clearly. If yes, are you willing to share the data with this committee? And I really want a straight answer, yes or no, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Um, regarding the question around, um, did we know about stopping humanization before um, it entered the market? No, uh, these, um, you know, we had to really move at the speed of science to really understand what is taking place in the market. And from that point of view, we had to do everything at risk. I think our Dr. Bourla, even though he's not here, would turn around and say to you himself, uh, if not us, then who? Um, Dr. Bourla actually felt the importance of what was going on in the world. And therefore, as a result of that, we actually um, spent two billion dollars at risk uh, of self-funded money from Pfizer to be able to manufacture as it well first of all research develop and manufacture at risk to be able to make sure that we were in a position to be able to help um, with the pandemic and well that's enough from her you heard her at the very beginning her statement was a fairly emphatic no that uh, they hadn't tested to confirm that those who were vaccinated would prevent the transmission of the, of the virus. You know, again, to reiterate, this is not an argument for or against the vaccine. It's a argument really against the use of scientific information at a given point in time that is declared not subject for further examination and development. And then, which is misused with mandates to control the behavior of others and deny them their freedom of choice. It's well documented. Every one of the assertions made by these individuals here on this page were wrong, just flat wrong. You can get the virus if you've been triple vaccinated, quadruple vaccinated. You can spread the virus even if you've been vaccinated. You can catch the virus repeatedly if you've been vaccinated. It's not a fail safe. It will help mitigate symptoms in an individual who has been vaccinated. But all of these assertions on this page and in that video that they used to totally upset the world's economy and create havoc in people's lives were false. Some circles today might say that the statements made by these individuals are in fact disinformation or maybe misinformation. It doesn't matter the intent behind the statements however innocent and well-intended they may appear. Furthermore, there are numerous questions about the ongoing side effects that uh, come from the vaccine. These questions should be examined as part of the ongoing process of discovery that's essential to prove the efficacy of future use of these mRNA vaccines. I'm reminded by a quote from Edward R. Murrow that is related to the need to allow science to pursue its own conclusions not the conclusions political power brokers hope to impose on the populace. Murrow said, We must not confuse dissent with disloyalty. When the loyal opposition dies, I think the soul of America dies with it. Now, he was talking about maintaining journalistic integrity, but if we consider scientific integrity, integrity to paraphrase Murrow's wisdom and apply it to this discussion of science, we must not confuse questioning the science 
with not believing in science. When the constant questioning and proving of science dies or is disallowed, then science itself dies with it. Let's embrace and celebrate what liberated science can continue to achieve to your health and prosperity. Hopefully you found this worthwhile. Please see our other offerings on the Liberty Bugle YouTube channel and click like and subscribe to be notified when the new episodes are released. Also, please join us at uh, libertybugle.com to connect and collaborate and reclaim the agenda for America. To your health and liberty.